the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Good afternoon, technology fans, and welcome back to New York City. We're here at AWS Financial Services Symposium with a power-packed day of coverage. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube. More importantly, I am joined by a fabulous guest from Neo4j today. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Hey, it is a pleasure. You're new to the Neo4j family. I am. Congratulations. Thank you. Very exciting. <laughs> Neo4j is widely adopted here in the financial services space, and you're on the sales end. Can you give me a couple of the use cases or things that you're seeing out in the wild? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so we've been working with financial services organizations for a while now. We've been one of the leading solutions that they use for um, use cases that can be broad, but more specifically, uh, fraud, um, money laundering, uh, customer 360 use cases, um, also identifying cyber attacks, right, where yeah. uh, we're able to identify bad actors as they digitally interact with a fi financial services organization, uh, and also as they transact online, we're able to identify those fraud patterns. Um, more specifically, uh, what we're seeing a lot of right now is use, ca use cases around uh, Gen AI initiatives and how Neo4j yeah. can fit into those use cases. Let's talk about that. What okay. are some of those use cases? Yeah, yeah, so, so, the power of LLMs uh, can be massive, right, with financial services organizations. But if we're being honest, there's been a slow uptake in Gen AI apps that are actually in production in financial Correct. services organizations, right? And that's due to three main reasons, right? The first is uh, lack of accuracy mm -hmm. on responses that you get from LLMs, lack of explainability, uh, and lack of context, uh, all three of which are big problems for highly regulated uh, organizations. Yeah. Right, so the approach uh, is grounding, right? That's really what we're trying to do uh, in the Jedi AI stack, right? And so what we're doing is we're building a knowledge graph specific to an enterprise and their data set, uh, right? That will augment how the LLM uh, interacts with the end user, provides answers and gives them back to the end user. So uh, the workflow would be you ask the LLM a question, the LLM will then uh, interpret that question into code that will query the knowledge graph, which again is an external connected network of a financial organization's data set, mm -hmm. right? The, the knowledge graph will then return back specific, uh, explainable and explicit answers. The LLM will then provide the response back to the end user in plain English, uh, right? So this is, this is commonly known as RAG, right? Yeah. Retrieval Augmented Generation, right? So that's, that's really what we're doing. And, and Knowledge graphs can really drive high levels of accuracy, deep explainability, context, reduce hallucinations. And that's why a lot of leading service providers are recommending um, knowledge graphs as really an essential part of the Gen AI stack. And this is a big shift from legacy systems, yeah? Big shift, yes, yeah. So we've been working with financial services customers to augment their, their existing systems for a while now, right? So let, let, me, let me give you an example, um, maybe, maybe back up a moment. So, um, we've been working with financial or organizations for a while. We've got um, over 75 of the Fortune 100 that we work with now um, and a growing nice. list. And so years ago, a financial services organization, this predates my time, obviously, but they came to us and said, hey, we, we know that there's more fraud in our network than what we're able to identify. How can we work with you guys to help see that, identify it, and mitigate it, right? And so what we did was a couple things. We put... Um, three pieces of critical information into a knowledge graph, right? We put their customer information into a knowledge graph. We put their product hierarchy into a knowledge graph and their credit card transactions all into one data set where we track the data itself, but also the relationships and patterns within that data. What that ended in was um, finding a lot of fraud that was otherwise unknown within the organization um, but a really cool byproduct of that use case was because we had customer data, product data, and credit card transactions in the knowledge graph with Neo4j, it turned into a product recommendation engine as well to help drive revenue growth for the, for the financial Which service. makes a lot of sense, but what a nice little silver lining if you're going to be making that investment. That's right. That's exactly right. Clever. Yep. Is, is that type of approach and solution synonymous across those 75 of the 100? Or, or are you seeing different approaches depending on the institution? Yeah, right. So it's, it's similar from a perspective of we're looking to augment existing systems, right? Right. Um, so, so graphs are already everywhere if you really think about it, right? So 
financial transaction systems, IT networks, um, social media networks, yeah. search engines, um, public transit systems. These are all examples of, of graphs that already exist today. Um, and our belief in what we're doing with a lot of companies is providing deep insights from structuring data, mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of organizations, they want to be data-driven. Uh, they aspire to be data-driven organizations, but many companies are missing half the value of their data because they're not able to track and keep records of relationships and patterns within data sets. That's what we mean when we say graph yeah. database. That's what a knowledge graph really is. We're, we're bringing in data from disparate systems uh, and, and keeping the data and the relationships among data points as equally important data sets. Uh, so this is what's really driving a lot of insights and outcomes at scale that companies otherwise would not have seen before. Yeah, wow. So that's pretty interesting. What I, I got to ask this question because now I'm curious. To the 25 that aren't working with Neo4j, what do you want to say to them? <laughs> Jump on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I feel like that's kind of an obvious choice. That's right. At this point. Yeah. One of the interesting things as we evolve, and it's a conversation we're having across verticals with Gen AI, is trust. Mm -hmm. And especially when it comes to financial services, you know, we're thinking about a bank. How do you ensure that these experiences you're designing are trustworthy? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so it goes back to the re retrieval augmented generation strategy, the grounding strategy, yeah. right? Where, where we can really tell the LLM, provide me the answer back that I'm looking for exclusively based on the context that I'm providing you. Yeah. Right. So we can really uh, put some fencing around what the LLM is responding back to you. Uh, and again, it's based on a knowledge graph from the enterprise's data set that we've built uh, that's going to augment the response and provide that deep explainability and context. And, yeah. and that's how we're able to drive trustworthiness because in a regulated industry, um, most of our customers, they can't afford to have inaccurate answers from an LLM. Never no. mind. Not it's table stakes. It. It's not. That's right. There isn't the level of forgiveness that we see in no. certain other <laughs> verticals. <laughs> yeah, I don't, right. I don't need the bank messing with me. <laughs> that's the last. 100%. That's the last thing I need. Looking forward, what's next for Neo4j? Yeah, so a great question. We're excited about a couple of things, right? We've been working on our um, managed graph database in the cloud for a number of years. Um, AWS is, is a key partner for us in that offering. Um, but what that does and what that unlocks for our customers um, is speed of deployment on Neo4j, um, speed of ingest, um, much greater levels of scalability, yeah. uh, and spinning up multiple databases um, for specific customers. Um, so that's a huge uh, part of our growth over the next uh, five to 10 years. Um, something additional that we're really excited about as well, um, also a, a big part of the AWS uh, network is, is with Snowflake and with Databricks. Uh, we're working with them to provide uh, analytic data and relationship data on um, data sets that aren't yet in Neo4j. So we're putting graph analytics oh, cool. on top of external data sets uh, to drive insights and actionable outcomes from uh, information and data that's not yet in Neo4j, which is a huge part of our growth story, I think. Yeah, I could definitely say, I mean, that feels like it opens up an entirely new market of opportunity. Oh my goodness. Taking off your Neo4j hat for two seconds, what excites you most about where we're at, our Gen AI future, and what could come? Yeah, I think what excites me most about uh, Gen AI is unlocking, again, insights uh, that we didn't think was possible before, right? Um, it, it's, it's an amazing enablement and training uh, tool. It certainly can be for, uh, for people coming into an organization like mm -hmm. myself. Um, the, the productivity benefits that you can gain from Gen AI is, is massive as well. We use that within my sales organization, mm -hmm. right? So we, we use AI tools to, uh, to perform tasks that can help us be faster to respond uh, and eliminate a lot of the um, you know, basic tasks that a salesperson would do to give us more time to work with customers to understand what they're trying to do and accomplish. Yeah. Okay. That's, I, I think, I mean, I think you're absolutely accurate. When you're talking with customers, I'm curious, are they, I mean, the financial services industry is not known for its rapid technological adoption, mm -hmm. lovingly. Yep. And so do you feel like we're in a new era now where this industry is adopting tech a little bit faster than they have, say, historically, given the Gen AI revolution? I, I, we feel so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what we're seeing is a is a huge uptake in interest and engagement around. Hey, we've got these Gen AI initiatives that we're working on. Here's the plans that we want to build. How can we work with you, uh, and how can we get these into production faster? Uh, and where again, knowledge graphs are a key component of that story. 
uh, is we provide the explainability, we provide the accuracy, we can help drastically reduce hallucinations um, for LLMs. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, we're seeing a huge uptick in the speed at which financial services want to want to bring to market uh, their productionized versions of Gen AI applications. Awesome. Are there any use cases, since you do get to interface with a lot of customers given your role, are there any use cases that you're allowed to share with us sure. that, that, have, that have surprised you perhaps or been interesting? Yes. Um, yeah, a couple. Um, so the, I think the most um, typical that we see right now are customer support use cases, um, know your customer, customer 360 yeah. use cases. Um, those are typical. Um, but also some of the more uh, cutting edge ones have been um, specific to outside of financial services. Some of the manufacturing um, use cases that we've seen around Gen AI applications has been really interesting. Um, Can you give us an example? Um, sure. So um, if you've got a manufacturing uh, system that can have no downtime, mm -hmm. uh, right? And you've got all these manual um, documents uh, of how to repair a certain um, piece of machinery, um, how do we feed that into an LLM so that a maintenance worker can ask the LLM a question? And again, we've built the knowledge graph based on uh, the customer's documentation um, to provide the 100% accurate, specific, explainable answer back to the maintenance person who can get that machine back and up and running to reduce downtime, to reduce any loss of revenue, um, and just overall help to keep, keep the business moving. Uh, but a lot of our, a lot of, so that's specific to manufacturing, but in financial services, we're seeing customer 360 use cases, customer support use cases, um, some really interesting bleeding edge use cases around investment banking, which is very cool I'm as well. I'm excited about that. With external, externally available information, but also proprietary information as well, feeding into the LLM. So those are, those are very cool to work on. Yeah, that side of it is going to be really fascinating, I think, in the next couple of years, quite quickly as everything yeah. ramps up. What do you hope to be able to say when I interview you next time, let's say a year from now, that you can't say yet today? Uh, I would love for you to ask how many Gen AI applications do you now have in production with your customer base? And you're able to say many, many, many. That's what we're really driving towards. Exactly. That is awesome. Wow. Well, Brian, thank you so much for taking the time today. This has been an exciting conversation. Congratulations again on your new job. Say what's up to Steve for me. I will. And from the whole Cube gang, we really appreciate it. And thank all of you for tuning in to our absolutely power-packed coverage here at AWS Financial Services Symposium in New York City. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Oh.